Uh, the topic given out today is uh, revolving more around quality and its effects. So I've made some notes and I would like to share all of that with you. I hope it helps. And uh, while I'm speaking, I want to keep it short. I prefer answering more questions for you guys. Hi, Dilish. How are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Right. I would prefer for you guys to ask me more questions. Hello, 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 everybody. And uh, because I think the more interactive it is, the the better it is. It's it's uh, best for you know you to ask questions because they'll be more specific to uh, you know things that you're facing in life and how can you do better, right? I think a lot of people are asking to join the session, so I think uh, Rohit's more in control of that, and he can help you out over there while I I start talking. So let's. Let's first of all understand what is quality, right? Uh, in in a basic textbook language, clearly defined standards and requirements make it easier for companies uh, to meet. You know what their consu consumers consider to be quality, and basically what this does is overall vision. Uh, you know of the company, it expands that vision and and it tells the company what they should be working towards. Uh, in the century that we are living in, I think every consumer, whosoever it is, whatever that consumer is trying to purchase, needs to be satisfied, not really. That person should be delighted. You get my point? Because if anybody wants, let's say, let's say for Apple, let's just take, for example, Apple, right? And I'm a big Apple fan, right? Everything that I possess is Apple. Why do you reckon people keep buying Apple products over and over again? And Apple launches everything over and over again in September, in October, or whenever they launch things, correct? People go back to the stores. I've, I've heard of people selling their kidneys. I'm not trying to make mockery or making, I'm not, neither am I trying to make fun of anybody. All I'm trying to explain is people do go back to buy this product, right? It's very, very essential to understand that the quality of the product or the service, whatever is being provided, right? will determine how soon the consumer is going to come back. And quality is not only in terms of product, it's also in terms of service majorly. Like when you see five-star hotels, when you see, you know, like right now, all my food is delivered to my doorstep, right? Thanks to coronavirus. But I, I dig into it. I want to understand. I want to understand what is it, what is it that will make me happy? Why, why do you think quality is important per se? It's critical. I think it helps to uh, reduce the risk for a company, right? It increases compliance, security, safety, productivity, and performance of the company overall. So it's very, very important, right? To increase the customer's experience, satisfaction, and take it up to the level of delight over a period of time. And all top-notch firms today try to focus on that. Like, let's take example of coronavirus. I get messages coming from Uber all the time that, you know, we've sanitized our cabs, We've sanitized this. Now the restaurants are opening and the cinemas are opening and we are going back to normalcy, right? Even though it's the new normal. But now more than anything else, I think dependency of the whole experience per se of the product and service is going to matter, right? The classic examples today, right? I, I, I ordered for a pizza. I was at my workplace. I ordered for a pizza and, and Domino's sent me a half-baked pizza. I wasn't really happy about it. I ordered using Zomato. And within five minutes, Zomato gave me my money back. They asked me whether I want my money back or whether I want a new pizza. I said, can't wait for a new pizza. But I just want to bring this to your notice. And within five minutes, my money was refunded to me. Correct? But going further, do I want to continue my relationship with Zomato 100%? Otherwise, I would have lost, you know, Interest in Zomato, Zomato would have lost a consumer, Domino's would have lost a consumer, and I would probably go to Pizza Hut. So in the highly competitive environment, I think the revenues of products and services can only and only increase when you provide better to your uh, you know, consumer. And that's going to be the most essential thing. And whatever you do, you need to focus on that brand name that you've created over a period of time. Right, that brand name that you've created over a period of time comes through quality. Right, the, the very famous saying on 
on Instagram and not since we're using Instagram right now, it takes six months to make uh, or build, uh, you know, a premium car, you know, yeah. like a Rolls Royce and probably six weeks to do a Toyota and probably six days to get out a Chinese car. But for me per se, I don't think I'm going to buy a Chinese car because I don't know how, what's the longevity of that car. Right. And to me, longevity matters because at the end of the day, when you're purchasing something, but be it whatever you are paying a price and you want to be satisfied and your perception does matter. A company might say that, you know, this is a quality product, but the consumer decides at the end of the day, right? Whether it's a quality product or no, because it's my perception. It's, it's the difference in what the, the company believes, what do they deliver and how do I perceive the delivery? True or false. And those are things that I think matter a lot because, you know, you need fulfillment at the end. You need usability, efficiency, security, all these things do matter. When something goes wrong with an Apple phone, they, they don't mind replacing it, right? Uh, Volvo has this policy. In the first three years, if you have an accident, right? And Volvo Bank gives you a brand new car if the engine gets damaged. I mean, that's their confidence. Look at, uh, look at Japan. It's quality of life. So quality is going to be attached to every aspect of your life. Let's say when we're running a company, True or false? Uh, it's it's quality of the sale. It's quality of the recruitment. It's quality of the training that the company provides. True or false? It's quality of the work environment, and everything per se is going to matter. At the end of the day, it is going to matter to people, right? Especially in a business like ours, where we provide service. How do we interact with the consumer? Do we interact with the consumer, customer, donor, whosoever that we're talking to for the plethora of services that we provide? Are we making their day? Are we being that person, whether you do face to face, whether you do telesales, whether you do digital sales, are you, are you making that person's day? And are you providing that, you know, happiness to that person, right? Whether it's quality of recruitment, which which organization today would want to hire substandard people, people who are low on work ethic, people who probably do not want to push their limits at work, right? People who do not want to add value to the organization, right? Uh, any company looks at people who are going to be assets, and people can only be assets when when they're brewed the right way, true or false. At the same time, what kind of quality? Uh, you know, do they bring to that company? You know, a lot of companies change overnight when they hire the right kind of people. Right. And, and it's essential for people to understand when you're, when you're hiring per se, it's, it's, it's very, very important to check the efficiency of that human being, to check whether that human being is, uh, you know, bring, going to bring about change, whether that human being is going to provide that service uh, to your customer base whether that human being is more of going to be a brand ambassador to your company, or is that person going to be more of, you know, somebody who's just going to look for a job, you know, run his errands and do things and then get out of office. You know, those days are gone. Those days are over. I don't think those days are going to be there for long and people are going to try to do something that are, are not going to survive. I think quality of training matters nowadays. Like, why do people leave companies? They leave companies because not because they're not getting paid, but because they're not, you know, growing their skills. Correct. And I, I'm, I'm a founder to two companies and I'm in the process of founding my third company now. Right. And, and my, I've always and always taken my time. I've always and always taken my time because I want to ensure that people have an experience. True or false that people are delivered what they desire. And for me, that is what is quality. I think that's always and always going to be uh, my way of looking at it. I think the way consumers uh, today measure quality is based on five, uh, you know, uh, 
dimensions and I, and I would like to emphasize on them. I think the first thing is, is the tangibility, right? Or the appearance, the physical facilities, equipment, personnel, communications, materials, whatever. I think that's the first dimension uh, that how quality should be measured. It's very, very important, right? And it makes a difference. In a service format, let's say you go to a spa, you're looking around, right? You want to see. There are different kinds of spas, and, and, and I like going for a massage. Uh, after a long day at work, you want to de-stress, and you want to... And, and you want to look around, you want to see, you know, the whole experience, the whole experience of how they take you in, what kind of aroma is in, in, in that, uh, you know, spa. And, you know, it's like going to a five star. Sorry, go again. Hygiene, 100%, 100%. You know, the equipment, the towels, it's the bathroom. It's, it's every small thing, right? And that's why, you know, it's a difficult business to run because everybody doesn't want to maintain it because it's, it's, it's got a lot of traffic coming in through a force. Like, w what's the difference between... Uh, Let's say, uh, you know, going to a Hakim Alam hair studio or, you know, just going to a roadside hair studio. Uh, like the roadside is not even a hair studio, it's just a salon. True or false? Yeah. It's the whole experience, right? It's the reliability because you know the people over there are trained really well. They have ability to perform and they deliver the service. They de deliver the service accurately and they're dependable. You know you're going to come back out with a smiling face. And reliability today, I think the second most important dimension uh, when it comes to, you know, all these kind of services. Very, very important. The third and most important thing is how responsive are you? Are you responding? Because remember, sometimes that you will have a rate customers. Sometimes people are having a tough time, right? And, and you know, you not, need to make sure that you don't react, you respond. You need to be very, very responsive when you're providing a, the right kind of service. You know, you, the, your willingness to help the customers, uh, your promptness in terms of service, like how Zimado gave me a great, great experience today. I think for me, all of those things matter. The next dimension that I look at is assurance, right? Knowledge, courtesy of the people who you're working with, you know, the ability to convey trust and confidence into you. And that's why I said, you know, the quality of people you hire, the way you train your people is so important in the service industry and be it the product industry also, right? The whole experience is going to matter. The, the courtesy of people around you, uh, whether you trust that service, like today, do you tr trust the Tata? Each one of us does, right? He's, he's just a trustworthy person, but that trust and that confidence is, is, is built over time. And the last and most important thing I think from, from where I see it is empathy, right? Uh, whether, you know, you, you're giving attention to the customers, you're caring for them. Uh, you know, a lot of, lot of people do a lot of things, like a lot of companies, I mean, do a lot of things for their customers, right? And they empathize with their customers. Very, very important. Uh, that, I, for me, I think those are the five dimensions that, uh, you know, measure quality. They measure the gap. The gap between the expectations of the of the customers for excellence and the perception of what actually was delivered, the service or whatever you might say the product. So I think that's that's more or less what I think about quality. And uh, I would like to take some questions now because otherwise it's more like a monologue. And I'm also ask you this: so when you discuss all these aspects of quality. Uh, yeah. Can you also share like how it affects your earnings, like uh, at each level, from a BA to an owner. At each level, how does it affect your earnings? Which is I think if you earnings. if you if you ask me predominantly about our business, right, and right. until now our conversation was very generic in nature, right. Predominantly at every level that you are, the you know call. I don't know how quality is going to be defined because it's going to be defined by the the person who's working with you. Your team member is. Mm -hmm. Is, is going to define that quality. Okay. I hope you understand, right? So when you're a BA, quality could be you coming into work on time, you being enthusiastic. Like for me, I look out for those qualities because I know that I can turn around that human being into a phenomenal person, into like somebody, who, I don't look out for talent. I specifically look out for 10 things in, in, in people. You know, I'm not going to give it out because that's going to deviate from the topic. But that's what I look out for. 
look out for punctuality. I look out for people who are willing to give in more. And and I think that's what you look out for when when you hire an individual. And then obviously the whole process of turning around uh, the individual from being a BA to being a leader, right? And then being a quality leader because only a quality leader is going to attract more people. So your knowledge, uh, right? The way the small thing like how you dress up and come into work. I think that matters. I think over the years, what's helped me run such a big organization, right? It has been the fact that, you know, a small thing like wearing a perfume in the morning. It's, it's, it's a very small thing and people might laugh about this shit, but I think that just talks about you. That just talks about like how you mentioned hygiene, right? That just talks about your personal hygiene. And I think that's, that's really, really essential, right? The, the way you are going to be, the way you're going to groom yourself. Uh, people are going to gravitate towards you when they would want to be like you. Yeah. Right or wrong? Otherwise, people wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't want to go and watch a Bhojpuri film right now. All due respect. Because I don't gravitate towards that shit. Uh, is, there, is there a market for that? 100%. Yes, sir. There is. 100%. But that's a quantity market. That's a massy market. We're talking about quality here. Is there a, is there a market for quality cinema? 100%. Like, would I want to watch an Irfan Khan movie versus watching something massy? 100% I want to watch Irfan Khan movie. So uh, there's always going to be that distinction. We're always going to distinguish, right? We're humans. And there's no racism or casteism or anything in this. It's just, it's just a human's want, right? S someone will buy a Rolex because that's quality. Someone will buy a Mercedes Benz or a BMW. And because some people are going to just strive to be that person, strive to be that qualitative person in life. And that's always going to be, uh, you understand, somebody's thing. So I got distracted with a lot of questions coming in. But anyways, uh, I think as a crew leader, again, uh, what kind of value do you add? Like, how do you, how, how do you train your people, right? Uh, do you have the right kind of work ethic? Are you training them in a qualitative manner instead of just putting people out there, right? Uh, most importantly, are you focused on customer service? Uh, you know, it's, it's all about teaching. Remember, any business in this world is all about training. And if you're not training your people right, I don't think you can grow any further. So personally, I think at every level, whether you're an entrepreneur, whatever you're doing, you, you get my point, it's going to be there. I just got a question here. Uh, my question is how to increase the quality of training when you lead a team. I think you need to break down your team. I think you need to use emotional intelligence over here, Dilish. I see your question, Dilish. I hope you're getting this right now. Right? You need to break your team down. You need to understand the wants of your people. Right? Not the needs. Everybody has similar needs. Food, clothing, shelter, blah, 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 blah. blah right? But you need to understand the wants of your people. I think that's very, very important. And then you've got to use your emotional intelligence. Right? And, and understand what are the likes, dislikes, you know, dreams of your people and, and make them come together as, you know, a cohesive unit, a, a strong coalition for that to happen. I think you need to spend time with them and, and you need to have, uh, you know, an outbound training where you, you know, hang out with them and everybody talks about their life goals. Right. And then you'll see that they're jamming together. And when they start jamming together, I think what's going to happen is overall quality will increase. In a, you know, the quality of work will increase up front. Obviously, you'll have people from different startup societies, some great with communication, some great with other things. Everybody has their own skill sets. But when you get them together, you'll know what are their strengths and weaknesses. You'll know what you have to work on with them, right? you'll be able to lead them and you'll have quality year will be uh, defined by the productivity that you get out of them. Right. And then obviously uh, you have to spend hours training human beings on them getting better. And that's, that's always and always going to be uh, a requirement. Dilish. I hope that answers your uh, question. We have another question from Aditya. here. He says, hello, Sagar, how are you? How to have a high? I don't know how to have a high, honestly. But anyways, I'm gonna proceed further, right? And uh, I want to ask you a question as now. Yeah, go on. Uh, 
Right. So I was asking this question earlier. That whole uh, age-old question of quality versus quantity. And I believe in one of the things you had talked about, you know, building a a, a company, a, a, you know, an organization of fifty people. Yeah. Right. Uh, some time ago. Now a lot of people are not in the right place. You know, where uh, they start giving into the whole quantity race. You know, leaving aside that in the quality part of it. And uh, so when people go into that, what are the adverse effects of it that can hamper with? I think that. Can I, I think. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Finish. So, so that was how can what are the adverse effects of all that that can uh, impact on your business or on your team or on your you know as an organization per se. Okay. Let's look at this. Right. When you're running a business, everything revolves on two aspects. Right. First and most important aspect is revenue generation, and quality does have a massive, massive. impact on revenue generation i hope you understand right because if you don't have the right kind of people you're going to disturb your market if you fill in your office or organization in any by any means with the wrong kind of people they're going to go out in the market and they're going <clears> to <throat> try and sell something which you don't want them to do they're going to misrepresent your company because they are just coming in with the mindset of making some money i hope you understand and when people just come in with the with the idea ideology of making just x amount of money i don't think <clears throat> i want to hire this person i want to hire people who have a long term vision uh who are showing uh signs of being a future entrepreneur right correct uh, who i believe have the ability and have the right kind of upbringing which involves honesty and integrity right i might have less people than other people right but those people understand the true essence of my business and those people help me empower the right kind of people eventually correct, correct? so the foundation of my business always has to be based on the right kind of people because when my business explodes right like <clears throat> like my business with quality application solutions as a franchisee right exploded into 21 franchisees over the last 4 5 6 years but the people that are that were associated with me and the people who found who basically formed the foundation of my business have been trained so extensively and everything every thing that matters right small minute issue they've been trained really really hard they've been like in a boxing ring for everything that went wrong they would just like probably get a punch right not with the wrong intention of trying to be little them or put them down but with the intention of i'm your coach i'm training you this is the requirement if we don't do this we're going to have issues in the future it's like it's like constructing a building right you you use cement which is a low grade cement and you use bricks which are low grade bricks are you going to construct a great building or a great structure not really right so anything that you're building has to be built on quality and yes i understand like people go like quality versus quantity so so if i have more i get more that's just greedy you're not trying to you you're not an entrepreneur you're not building something you're not passionate about it you're not building something for life you're just building something because you want some money right now yeah, because that's what I've come to because a lot of people right now are like i want to get promoted as quickly as possible so i want as many people as that possible. doesn't it doesn't matter i don't even think you should look at getting promoted i think you should look at building a business what is getting promoted these are just titles given to you I, I don't even live by my titles. Like, you know, where on my on my Instagram handles or my website, see me writing organizational consultant or anything. I don't write it. I am who I am. There are some hundred people viewing me right now, and there will be some other people viewing me later. I don't need to define who I am. This is who I am, right? I'm a business person. I build a business. My business or any business is people centric. and it's always going to be people centered you can't change it right but you got to work with the right kind of people 
Because if you're not working with the right kind of people, you're not going to get the right results. Your results are going to be short-lived. And that's the, one of the reasons why so many companies are shutting down because they didn't work with quality people. They didn't focus on quality. They just focused on mass production. And I live in a democratic country, right? Like it's exactly what China did. Mass production, mass production, mass production. They just want to mass produce everything. And I knew that they're going to fall down. Some, and that's exactly what happens to a lot of people because the greed of, of money and the impatience in you to just make money results in lack of quality. So you do survive in the market for some time, but eventually it eats you up because you have rave fucking reviews coming in, which you don't want. Sorry for my language, guys. It's sometimes abused, but I mean, can't help. Didn't mean it that way. Right. So I hope that answers your question. Right. We have okay. Chaya here who has a question. Hello, Sagar. My question that's it is that it's hard to expect the same sincerity as you're carrying towards the work, but can learn them. So Chaya, I think if, if you're, if you're, you are sincere towards your work and if you're expecting other people to be sincere uh, towards your work, towards their work, obviously not your work, but uh, probably they're part of your team. I think Chaya, stop expecting. Stop expecting things from people. I honestly and honestly feel that you need to stop expecting from people. Right? Leadership is a beautiful quality that you can have. Right? You need people to follow you, you be the best example. Don't hope for people to change and be you. They'll never be you. You can only have followers. You'll always be the best. I just want to come back to Aditya's question. He said, how to have a high sales average in terms of mindset. I think, Aditya, you need to have a big dream. You really and really need to have a big dream. Uh, you know, and you need to write it down and you need to paste it in front of you and you need to look at it every single day. You need to have short-term goals. You need to have mid-term goals. You need to have long-term goals. And you need to constantly, constantly think about it. It's only then and then that you're going to, uh, you know, have that right kind of mindset of uh, building a phenomenal team and having a high sales average. Sales is everything. Revenue is everything. I, I truly and I'm a true believer of that. Don't compromise on your quality. Don't try to do cheeky things. But I think your enthusiasm, the way you pitch and Bala has asked a similar question. How do I convince people and stuff? I think your enthusiasm at the end of the day. I think your enthusiasm is, is, is going to be infectious. Like right now, it's it's almost coming close to 8.30 and I'm really, really excited on this call even at 8.30 p.m. in the evening. So I think overall enthusiasm through the day uh, it is going to determine, uh, you know, the sale. Like There's I another question. A lot of, yeah, go on. Question from uh, Arvind, who says, how do you know if you're ready to build your own team or not? Mate, I never knew. I never knew. And you'll never know. Right? You just got to be the best version of yourself. People automatically start following you. I think the most, most essential thing is you being the best version of yourself. As, as soon as you're going to be the best version of yourself, and as soon as you're going to be passionate towards your work, uh, any organization in this world just does three things. They do sales, they recruit people, and they train people. Right? And what's the harm in trying? I don't know. When I started uh, doing face-to-face -face advertising, when I started doing uh, sales, and I remember the first time someone joined my team, and when someone said that, listen, I want to uh, work with you. I want to see how you do things. Right? My focus primarily was just go out and do what I did every day. And I love doing that. And you know what? The first person who came with me, and, and it was a girl, and, and she was like, wow, you love your work so much. I said, yeah, I just, I just enjoy doing it. Because if you're doing something half-heartedly, you're not going to deliver the right kind of results. You will deliver some results, but you will not deliver the right kind of results. Like the results that are required for that thing to flourish and, and transform into something mammoth. So I think you need to enjoy your work on a day-to-day -day basis. I think you don't want to think about whether I'm ready to build a team or you're not ready to build a team. As long as you're enjoying your work, you're passionate about your work and, and you're achieving more and you're a great revenue generator. And I keep emphasizing on it. We need to be a great revenue generator, right? I think it's not going to be difficult for you to build a team. I think people are going to uh, 
fall in love with you. I think we fall in love with you as in from a work perspective, right? And I think uh, uh, people are just going to look at you and go like, wow, I just want to be like you. Uh, I think you'll inspire people automatically. Well, so we have another one. Love. Henny, Henny, Henny loves me, man. She can ask me questions all day. Like if, if it was just you, <laughs> me, and, if it was just... Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, like if you just have Henny on this call, you don't need anybody else on the call. She can do what, what 100 people can do by herself. So here we go. Can you put more light on quality recruitment, uh, especially now that we're doing telesales? Wait, now is the easiest time to recruit people. Nobody has a job. People with packages of 25 lakhs, 30 lakhs have gone jobless. Everybody needs money, Henny. I think you need to sit down, uh, come up with some wacky ads. You need to put those ads out. You need to talk to people about entrepreneurship. You need to promote entrepreneurship now. India is the place to be. I firmly believe that now people are going to realize that more than being an employee, you need to be an entrepreneur. I think even all employees are going to realize that they need to have side hustles because just just having one source of income is not going to help you anymore. And I think Henny now, more than anything else, now people have realized that. Because a lot of people have delayed salaries. A lot of people have salary cuts. A lot of people don't have jobs as well. I'm just being honest. With you. It's all over the news. I think, Henny, what you need to focus on is figuring out where these people are. You need to activate LinkedIn. You need to activate all those other things that you are working with. And I think uh, you're going to come across a lot of people who are looking out for the right kind of opportunity, right? And uh, you need to connect with them. Don't try to use the age-old ways of using Nokri.com and Monster and all of that. That jazz doesn't work anymore. I think you need to focus on LinkedIn. I, need, I think that's the future. Uh, you need to connect with people. You need to promote your company on LinkedIn. You need to talk about the entrepreneurial opportunity, right? There are a lot of softwares online available, uh, which can help you, uh, you know, get content ready for your company, which you need to put it across to in messages to people. Uh, and that's how you're going to, uh, you know, attract a lot of quality people. And you need to personally uh, probably uh, put up a video message every now and then, a short video, uh, talk to people about it. And I think that's what's going to help you uh, basically attract the right kind of people. I just hired a dentist yesterday. I mean, that's the state of our country right now. Right? Uh, so I think it's really, really easy, but it's about keeping your mind clean, right? And positive. And uh, it's, it's, it's all about just having a great positive attitude, you know, when you wake up in the morning. And, you know, it's taking us back to our basics of eight steps and it's step number one of eight steps, but to success. But I think that's 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 the most essential thing. You know, how positive are you going to be? And I know times are difficult. I know. I know things are things are not the way they were supposed to be. But you know what? It's the best time to re-innovate yourself. I'm just excited about that. I'm just excited about I'm learning new skills. I've learned how to cook. Now that's probably going to be my next side hustle. I want to I, I wanna have a food cart happening very, very soon. Right? Just Just for four or five hours in the evening. When I'm free, it's 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 like therapy. It's therapeutic, you know. So you gotta keep yourself engaged. You need to talk to people, right? You need to uh, do all those things. Henry. I hope that helps. Is there any other questions uh, that we haven't answered? Oh, you're welcome, Dilish man. Long time. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for joining. I think Dilish, I think Dilish also asked a question long time ago. I don't know if you answered that. Can look at that. Uh, I think I have. Otherwise, you wouldn't have said great sessions. <laughs> I, I, I think he, I, he asked two questions. There you go. How you create quality partners of first generations? What do you talk? I talk to them about how I want to be super duper rich when I'm 50, Henny. I talk to them about how I want to be independent. I talk to them about how I'm so passionate about everything I do. I talk to them about my bucket list, wherein I want to jump off a plane for, in... Uh, you know, that's the next thing I want to do from Mount Everest. That's what I talk about. I talk about the business opportunity. I talk about how I was a pauper at 24, goalless, aimless, right? And then how I changed myself. I just talk about ev I just talk about every experience I've had. I talk about, you know, every other human being who's taught me something. I I ensure that they network with everybody else who's quality, right? And and that's that's the most important thing. 
Uh, Dilish has put up his question again. I think how to increase the quality of training. I think Dilish, uh, you, you you need to use platforms now, especially uh, let's talk about during COVID, right? Uh, you need to use Zoom a lot. You can use Instagram a lot, right? And uh, if you need your people, and if you need to train your people, I think the most important thing is you need to figure out, uh, you know, professionals in the training, uh, you know, domain, and you need to get in touch with them. And then you need you need a mentor who's going to train, who's going to keep talking to you consistently about how do you go about training? Because you know, training was it has been my forte. Always, I love doing it. Uh, Right, but do all leaders become a great coach? Very rarely, because leaders just expect people to come through. So I think the best point that I've made in this meeting to you is, you're a great leader. Just don't expect people to come through. You will not become a great coach. Very rarely do great leaders become a great coach because they are unable to. They can preach to their followers what they do, but they can't teach their followers. You know, there's a difference between preaching and teaching. You get my point. That's why there was only one Jesus. Jesus could preach, and nobody else could ever become Jesus. True or false? Because preaching and teaching is different, and it's the belief. So more than anything else, keep preaching the right work ethics. And yes, training requires a lot of patience. Sit down, break it down, break every aspect of training down. You know, just like how your mother fed you when you were a kid. And it takes me back to the most cliche thing, but. I think my mom trained me really, really. I think she taught me everything. I think she taught me how to brush my teeth. Patience. The problem with people is they're impatient. They want instant results, right? And that's not going to happen, right? So we have. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. Go on. I'm done. Okay. So we have a question from the entrepreneur cell. Uh, cell. Uh, how to have balance in sales and recruitment in the COVID-19 situation? I think you have so much more time on you now. Travel times cut down, right? Your time to go out to pubs and drink and eat at dinners and go watch movies. Everything is cut down. There's no new content on Netflix. So from where I see it, I don't. I think you're misutilizing your time now. Right. I don't see why and how you cannot balance sales and recruitment. Because from where, where from where I'm coming, I don't think there's anybody involved in my recruitment process besides me and my HR team right now. I, I'm not even involving my leaders. So that gives your leaders a lot of leverage to have more hours to do things. Unlike before, when they were predominantly involved in the recruitment process at least two to three days in a week. And uh, if you want more information on that, uh, I think you should get in touch with me on a personal note and I can probably provide you an SOP on, on how things work in my organization and how I do things and how, you know, uh, there's, I, I think that question is not relevant anymore in, in, in this era of telemarketing and, and digital sales. I, I genuinely don't think because... I think your sales force should predominantly be focusing on sales while you focus on recruitment. I think trainings become much more easier because you can train three people at the same time, unlike before where we had a lot of hurdles when we were doing face-to-face -face advertising. Uh, we have a question. Hi, Sadhguru. Even though training guys, uh, with all your efforts, people keep finding back doors when things aren't going good for them. How do you work up? Hey, people, are listen, an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur. Right? An employee is an employee. All do you respect? Right? Someone who wants to be an entrepreneur is going to be an entrepreneur. Someone who doesn't like entrepreneurship is always going to look out for a back door. And you might work your ass off on people. I really want to be honest with you. But if a person is, is not dreaming of entrepreneurship, you're working with the right person. You've got, to be, you've got to get it right on day one. You need to talk to people on day one. And people will move out. And people would like to not work with you continuously. And that's normal. I think that's pretty normal. I don't think that's a back door. I just think that people are not ambitious enough. That's how I look at it. And I don't feel bad. As long as I have put in my 100%. As long as I can assure myself that I gave it my 100%, 
and if, if someone's not understanding it i don't see anything wrong in it and if they want to do something else so be it mate i've been here 20 uh sorry not 20 been here 11 years i have 21 22 entrepreneurs right do you think in 11 years everybody who worked with me like turned into an entrepreneur not really true or false uh, i mean there are loads of people who did not become an entrepreneur that that's more i think only one, less than 1% turned into entrepreneurs rest worked with me left we still friends they left on a good note i'm really happy for them someone needs to buy your product buddy if everybody becomes an entrepreneur it's very dangerous it's going to be lethal you have another question here how to make i'm sorry i missed your mind if you can look at it okay so it's uh, how do you make people understand that every uh, as that every pattern uh, you follow like meeting networking are equally important uh so if the uh, every other thing that you do is as important to you that's what the that person sent to us every other thing that you do is uh that every other aspect of the business is as important like meeting and networking is as yeah. important as uh, law of averages i mean it is so how what's the question how do you explain it to somebody else how do you that person also how do you explain how do you make people understand that i think i think people understand that over a period of time right uh i don't think i mean you can talk about it and i think when you make them attend such kind of events like uh like networking calls right now or probably conferences i think that's when that it's an eye opener so only through your words i don't think people will understand it. it's an experience right and someone needs to experience it right uh you need to give that person some time i think uh that's how you know it's going to be there's a question here what should would we do to show our business to the new guys and it's as colorful as before it is really colorful still use digital sanjeev use digital i'm enjoying it i'm in the comfort of my house and i'm educating you and otherwise i had to take get on the flight go to bangalore educate some people stay there for 3 4 weeks do things are changing you got to look at it positively the problem is people don't look at it positively you i know you're working remotely right but for a very long time now you will work remotely and you got to come to terms with it even your travel is going to be limited because there're going to be so many restrictions now but you got to find new ways of doing things and that's why we are the human race we need to learn to adapt i hope that answers your question uh now that we work remotely it is hard to safeguard our attitude any tips on how to still keep going with a positive attitude without losing it talk to people who are positive mate fill your mind with a lot of positive thoughts i think it's very very important for you to fill your mind with a lot of positive thoughts you need to network with people who are really really positive you need to work around it and if you're not going to work around it i really don't think that you're going to survive long in this business please don't mind but you can't lose your attitude because before even you joined the business you never lost your attitude so if you really want to be an entrepreneur right i think you just need to wake up with the right kind of mindset happy things are going to happen sad things are going to happen your mood might swing you everybody has mood swings i have mood swings as well but you understand there's nothing called as losing your attitude just because you're having a tough day you're going to have a tough day. all right yeah question from bhanu yeah do you feel the pressure of achieving your own set target for no one else but yourself if yes please uh, say how you deal with it i feel very pressurized i'm always 5 to 7 years away from where i wanted to be i'm going to turn 35 i'm good 5 years away from where i wanted to be uh i do beat myself up not literally right i do get frustrated no doubt about it but then you know such is life you're always going to be 5 to 7 years away from where you always wanted to be but that that's it you just got to keep striving hard and then you're going to have one great big year and that one big year is just going to catapult you and take you 10 years ahead of where you expected yourself to be so probably at 45 now i'm going to be where i expected to be when i was 65 but that is life you got to keep 
pushing your limits. When you keep pushing your limits, that's when you achieve more. I hope that answers your question. Sounds good. Uh, Perfect. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Sagar. Thank you for no problem, taking the time for doing this with us. I hope everybody had a good session as well, and I hope everybody's questions were answered. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, Sagar, uh, for joining us. Oh, Ismay, before you before you uh, bid us goodbye, I would like you guys to uh, follow Skill Culture and Sagar Panwani on Instagram if you want to learn more. Uh, connect with me, uh, right? And I'm I'm starting some new stuff. I'm starting a new series of, uh, you know, how to be a phenomenal entrepreneur in times of Corona and eventually. So if you guys want to uh, get more information, feel free to follow me on my Instagram handles. Uh, thank you so much once again, guys. Have a good one. Have a good night.